Um, okay, so um, I'm really um, delighted to be joined now by Richard Stubbs, uh, the Chief Exec at the Yorkshire and Humber Academic Health Science Network. Um, I've done quite a lot with these, a lot of work with these guys, but Richard is a real champion for the diversity and, and, and inclusion agenda. He's written so many pieces and um, stood on so many stages. So we're really, uh, really lucky to have you here, Richard. So um, I'm going to hand over to you now. And thanks very much for being here. Thanks, Louise. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And and uh, morning, everyone. It's been a great morning and um, and, and a great day yesterday. And um, as Louise said, my name is Richard Stubbs. I'm Chief Executive of the Yorkshire and Humber Academic Health Science Network. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here talking to you today, but it's also a real privilege to be a partner in this event um, with obviously NHS England and obviously with the Shuri Network as well. I'm going to talk for a little bit about um, some work, kind of campaign, really, that we've been doing for the last 12 months. Um, but first, I think I will just have to give you a little bit of an explanation about what an HSN is for those of you who don't know. So could I have the next slide, please? And the next one as well. So very briefly, um, hopefully you've all been staring at the logo um, on most of the screens for the last two days. But uh, at Academic Health Science Network, there's 15 of us across the country. We work as a connected network of networks, which means we work both in our own regions, but also together. And we've got two jobs. We're here to spread and adopt innovation in all its forms, not just digital, um, across the health landscape. But we're also here because we're interested in economic growth. We're interested in creating jobs. We're interested in creating opportunities, inward investment, and um, helping our regions to level up. And we recognise that economic growth is also a health challenge. And if you want to know more about that, there's something else that I'm very passionate about, which is levelling up Yorkshire and Humber. And there's a report that we put out um, a few months ago, which hopefully you'll find if you Google. Uh, next slide, please. So just to talk about the origin story of, of, of where we are. Um, as you'd imagine, um, I'm a BAME Chief Executive in the NHS. That's an incredibly um, responsible position and you feel that responsibility very acutely. Um, throughout my entire time in the NHS, I've been involved outside of my day job, whatever that day job happens to be, in terms of helping to um, support and champion diversity issues. Um, but actually, I have to give a huge shout out to a good friend of mine, a lady called Joan Sadler, who's part of the NHS Confederation, who came to me about 18 months ago and asked if I would um, sponsor a new NHS Leaders BAME network that she was hoping to set up within the Confederation, which I was very happy to do. And I was, instead of sponsoring it as George and Homba, I talked about, well, maybe we could do it as an HSN network. And that got me thinking, so what's the rationale for something like an HSN network to sponsor that kind of community? And that's when I realised with, to be honest, a pretty, you know, horrific kind of realisation that um, I had one part of my world which was around um, helping to um, champion and support people from diverse backgrounds and, and being an ally where I could elsewhere. And a completely different part of my world, which was around promoting and championing innovation, helping to reduce health inequalities. And I hadn't really understood that those two things could and should be should be put together. And through Joan's um, invitation, I started to think about the, um, the, the twin importance of diversity within innovation and started to realise that actually probably as a Yorkshire and Humber HSN, but obviously as a, as a national network, we probably weren't doing as much on this agenda as we should be. And I, as you'd imagine, felt um, as the only BAME HSN chief exec, a real, a real need for me to lead this personally. So we started to have a conversation about the innovation pathway. We started to have a conversation about some of the roles that are um, uh, inhabited in our NHS organisations and also in other kind of NIHR or supportive innovation infrastructure and started to talk about the importance of the representation of those roles and the access and influence that arose as a result of that. Next slide, please. And actually, we've just heard from SOLAT and, and the National Centre for Diversity. They gave us a great amount of help in terms of just understanding this in, in, in more detail and understanding the rational rationale for us to be involved in the work, but also what is it we should be doing. I mean, I don't need to talk to this audience, hopefully, about the business case. The business case is absolutely clear. Um, we effectively, we have almost 20 percent of our 1.2, 1.3 million staff in the NHS who identify as BAME. That 20% means if we are closing the door on access to our innovation pathways, 
um, to those 20%, then in effect, as a system, we're turning down one fifth of the potential new ideas for working and new ways of working that could come from our staff. And often with our innovations, they do initially initialize and, and, and emanate from our staff. Um, there's also something about the fact that when you do understand an, a diverse team, and I was, I was on Victor's talk yesterday when he talked about this, um, the diversity of a team means that that team is 152% more likely to understand the needs of a client, a customer, a patient. This is not a health specific stat, uh, but it's something that obviously does resonate for us in healthcare. So we need to ensure that all our staff and innovators can access and be supported by the innovation pipeline. But we also need to ensure that those who hold those innovation support roles are themselves representative of our communities that we serve. And I think most importantly, we need to recognise and celebrate that innovations that are nurtured and developed by people with those lived experiences are more likely to be better at reaching more of our population and helping us to reduce health inequalities. So can I have the next slide, please? So I'm really grateful to my HSN colleagues who, you know, on hearing my, my championing of this opportunity, really jumped in and supported um, across the board. So we have a, a national group of us, all, all 15 HSNs are, are represented. We're all investing a fairly modest amount, but um, we're making that go a long way into really, I think, trying to provide um, a leadership platform for how and why academic health science networks and others who work in and around this innovation space could support this agenda. Um, and we also have a hashtag, obviously, which is, which is most important. And I'll throw some links up at the end, but I would really encourage you to look at some of our pages on our National HSN Network webpage, to, uh, particularly our report, which is there on the top right there, uh, which came out uh, a year ago this month but also some YouTube videos, and not all of which featuring me, you'll be glad to know. And um, as I said, um, from SOLAT, the National Centre for Diversity work that they helped uh, to initialise this work and provide some really interesting evidence base about the rationale for, for driving this work forward. Next slide, please. But I think it's really important that we started with ourselves. And in that mode, um, we um, identified a series of pledges that all 15 HSNs um, took last year, last September, when we when we launched our campaign. And those pledges split into three areas. Um, there are pledges underneath these kind of headline three areas, but there's pledges around our organisations. That's around our accountability. It's around um, reporting our, our our progress in a very public way, being accountable for that for that delivery and also having senior leadership um, representatives um, who are absolutely holding themselves to account for the delivery of our, of our impacts that we hope to see. Pledges around our staff. Um, we are all undertaking unconscious bias training as a, as a minimum in terms of the OD elements that we want to um, improve on in, within our individual HSNs. But we're also thinking hard about our own recruitment processes and policies and ensuring that we're doing our best to ensure that the staff who work in HSNs are themselves representative of the communities that we serve. And perhaps most importantly, thinking about our work and the huge influence that you are privileged to have in the HSN network. So we run things like the NHS Innovation Accelerator to name, but one of the many, many, many pre pieces of work and programmes that HSNs do. And in that privileged position of being able to select and support innovations and innovators, we recognised that we needed to take a much greater responsibility in terms of our understanding of bias within those processes, but also what we are doing to ensure that um, competition and selection processes are equal and accessible to all. And also, as I said, recognising that in this really wicked challenge of reducing health inequalities, it is about supporting our diverse staff and the diverse community of innovators who are outside the NHS to understand that they're going to come forward perhaps more than the white majority 
with the kind of groundbreaking innovations that are really going to be both acceptable and appreciative to um, a diverse community, but also might do the most to help us to reduce health inequalities. Next slide, please. And within all this, um, we also recognise that role models are incredibly important and we're blessed to have um, a number of, of BAME innovators who were already within our extended family that is the HSN network. Um, Taz, you, you'll see a picture of, of Taz there. He's on um, hopefully in just a few minutes after me, so I won't be talking too much about Taz's story because I don't want to steal his thunder, but I think it's really important that we celebrate our success. It's really important that we champion our role models and put them on pedestals. And I'm really proud and privileged to be in a position um, through leadership of this work to be constantly in a, in a place where I can thank and champion the role models that came forward to be part of our initial work. And there are many, many more other than the ones in this slide. I mean, one of the absolute joys and pleasures of my work was around how do you, it was around trying to um, uh, whittle down the case studies and, and stories that we were presented with and we started to really look around and see the work that our BME innovators were already doing in their own communities with huge impact. And, and um, you know, there are a lot of people who couldn't make the report, um, but we are still ensuring that their stories are heard loud and clear. So I'm just going to conclude with just a, a few anecdotes, a few stories from some of those innovators. So can I have the next slide, please? But I would urge you to, you know, please do download the report. The link's coming up at the end and, and read all their stories. I mean, I don't have time to go through them all, but just to present you with a flavour of the kind of people who are out there doing some fantastic work. Um, I've also pinned a tweet on my Twitter page if that's easier for you to just direct you to this work. But just starting off with Arjun. Arjun, as you can see here, is an innovator. He has um, something called the Low Carb Program. Um, it's a structured education and behavioural change program for people with type 2 diabetes. Obviously, with this agenda, you know, there is a huge um, and disproportionate impact on those who have a Southeast Asian heritage. And an innovator like Arjun comes to the table ready to understand and embrace um, those cultural significant, significant um, um, opportunities to engage in a much better way. And Arjun would say that digital provides him with the opportunity to hyper-personalise the user experience in terms of culture, in terms of language, in terms of social norms and expectations. And actually we're now scaling the low car programme through the NHS Innovation Accelerator that I mentioned earlier. Next slide, please. I also want to talk about Yinka. Yinka is the Programme Director for Digital Health London, which is one of our biggest and most important innovation accelerators. And Yinka um, is a phenomenal um, um, clinician and leader and manager. But given the strategic importance of an asset such as Digital Health London and its ability to to filter and to support and to select, most importantly, the kinds of innovators and innovations that are going to receive funding and support and access and sponsorship. Having somebody with Yinka's experience in that essential high senior leadership gatekeeper role is the kind of um, opportunity that we've perhaps not really focused on previously and understanding how, given the diversity of London's population, having someone like Yinka in that role, I think is a blueprint for the future. And the next slide, please. And then I'm just gonna finish with Naomi. Uh, Naomi's wonderful. She's the founder and CEO of, of Chanua, and, and that is a, a, a healthcare innovation organization. Naomi's story is, is, is amazing, and I won't do it justice by any means, but um, her innovation is about increasing um, uh, mental health and health outcomes through human-centered approaches that are complemented by technology. And it's been inspired by her years of working in, in primary care psychology services, um, creating culturally adopted uh, therapies for African and Caribbean communities. And her experiences on the ground of working at the coalface of primary care 
are the experiences that Naomi's been able to take into the values and the uh, ambition and objectives of her innovation company. And as I said, it's a rich um, diversity of experience that people like Naomi, people like Yinka, people like Arjun, people like Taz bring into our world. And we're very proud to be supporting them and the many, many more BME innovators who are also part of our extended ecosystem. Next slide, please. And so to conclude, I mean, just a few words about what we expect to happen next. Obviously, I'm very passionate about this and then we'll continue to drive this work. It's in not at all what the HSN network is, is commissioned to do, but I hope you'll agree that it's essential that we do this kind of work, given our place and our influence in the innovation ecosystem. Um, coming up for us in the autumn, we're actually going to produce a report looking at LGBTQ and innovation, and um, that will be published um, in the next few months. But then a major um, update and publication next summer, um, when I'll be holding myself to account for all the pledges that I've made um, as part of this work, but also that our, our HSN network family have made across the country. Um, we'll obviously continue to work really closely with fantastic organisations such as the Shuri Network, um, but we do always want help and support. So please do get in touch if you can help in any way at all. So that's all from me. Hopefully you follow us on Twitter, use our hashtag. And yeah, Louise, have to take any questions. Thank you so much, Richard. Um, and absolutely, I would urge everybody. I, I've, I've, I actually have a physical copy of this document. I know we're not supposed to have physical copies, but it's so good. And the, re the thing I really like about it, actually, Richard, is that it's a really easy read. There's nice big pictures. There's not too much text. And you can get in contact with it. It's really easy. And I know um, when I spoke to your colleagues, there was such a wealth of people that you could have put in here. You know, you could have had a catalogue. And that's great. But we need, you know, it's almost like we need a platform to put the rest of them on. So, um, and I think, yeah, it's just, you you are way ahead of your, your your time sort of, you know, getting this publication. Was it last year when you uh, when you released it? Was, it? it was, it was September the 9th, I think, last year when we, when we published it. So we were working on it all last. Yeah, so it was in the making for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think um, just on the NHS Innovation Accelerator, I think that's still open, isn't it? The Accelerator programme, is it open until middle of October? It is. What a great segue to a plug. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we are just, um, we, the window is open. And if you haven't heard of the NIA, our NHS Innovation Accelerator, um, which is delivered through a combination of NHS England, our friends and partners, UCLP in London, and then the entire HSN network, please do Google it. But it is um, a, an amazing opportunity for innovators both inside the NHS and outside the NHS to come forward both with innovators and with their innovations to find support and access into helping them to drive the spread and adoption of their ideas into frontline use in the NHS and there I say often internationally as well and um, I think particularly particularly important for us that we see a swell of BAME applications so please do look it up if you do want any advice help background you know just give me a bell and we can have a chat about it but yeah I do look forward to seeing more applications in the future fantastic thanks so it's the NHS innovation accelerator program if you google it it'll come straight up and in fact I've just urged a company that I know in York who are, are um, um, a real innovator uh, they're, they're, they've created actually some door pads which secrete um, um, the gel for um, uh, to kill infection and um, they were going to apply for it and I had a really nice chat with our friend Liz Ashel Payne who I'm sure many yeah. of you know and she was crying about the virtue you know she really shouting about the virtues of the accelerator program so yeah please go and have a look at it um, sorry can you repeat again please and so it's the NHS Innovate Innovation Accelerator program is that right Richard? It is NHS Innovation Accelerator. NIA. Yeah, they make such long names, but the, but that's the one. But if um, Siobhan, if you've got a problem, just ping me an email and I'll point you in the right direction. Okay, thanks, Richard. That was absolutely super. As always, we.